of learning how to tune, it's not going to be a bad idea to do that. So let's go ahead here, try this again. I'm going to go click my, get live with my ECU, and let's do our pool. So stop being live with the ECU and let's take a look at the dyno screen quick and we can see we made 277 wheel and our torque was 208 so we're picking up power and we dial it in our fuel pretty good we can see we need some more fuel on the top end of the table here we can see um, looking at our lambda overlay let's just add the fuel as we see it here I'm gonna do control J at 8% here and right in here I'll add 3% remember our target air fuel is going to be 11.5 can see right here we have to add a little bit more as well I'll just do control I and sort of blend that in now let's jump into our graph and take a look at that so we can see we did a full pull up to about 7,000 rpm we can see that we're at six pounds of boost so again our wastegate spring is six pounds it's always important that you baseline off your wastegate spring you don't want to assume that you have a six pound spring and you have a 20 pound spring we always want to go and not turn the boost controller on we will be doing that in a little bit but we want to make sure that we know what the wastegate springs building in our particular setup and if we have boost creep or not we can see we're building uh, we have 15 degrees of timing here let's just jump into our fuel let's take a look at this as we're panning up through we can see that our air fuel is showing us 12 6 12 5 duty cycle is only 29 percent duty cycle now we do have the 1700s with the 525 liter per hour fuel pump we should have plenty of fuel to about 750 maybe more but just to be conservative, let's assume we have fuel to 750. So this duty cycle is showing me that's probably about right where we should be at, at this boost and this power level um, in fuel usage and in total fuel capacity usage. So that should be good. Okay, so let's go in now. We've added some fuel. Um, let's go and bump some spark timing in since we know that we have pretty conservative values. I'm gonna be going here at my column 10 and higher from approximately uh, 2,900 and I'm gonna go here, control J. I'm just gonna go and add four degrees. Now I'm going in a little bit more of a step than I normally would. Because I'm on ethanol and I have a built engine, I'm not worried about potentially doing any damage. It definitely can take it. We wanna feel it out and try to walk the spark timing up. We don't wanna just automatically just hammer in spark timing and then damage the engine. So we'll walk it up four degrees here. I'm gonna be blending it between my, my rows here. So for my columns uh, seven to columns 10, I'll just do control P and walk this across here and just blend this in so that I can step the timing nice and linear as I go up and load here. And then we'll also go in on the lower RPMs and blend this in as well. So we can see up top here, I'll just blend this in. It's going from the lower RPM into the higher RPM here. So from roughly about 1500 to about 3000, we'll just do our control P and just keep walking it up. So that should be good right there. Let's go ahead and let's save it let's save that change and let's go here and get live with the ECU again so we've added four degrees of timing we've added a little bit more fuel now we should see that we pick up a little bit more power at the same boost level so let's go ahead and try this I'm gonna throw my headphones on and I'm gonna go here and hit record